Well, hello everybody! Welcome back to G Bears Off Grid Ways Homestead in the Desert. And as promised, I am going to try to get this uh, panel finished up. And I promise I would actually show how I um, put this thing together. And of course, I'm not going to show you how I put this part together because this part's already been together for a while. But I've got the rest of it here ready to go in. And I'm going to show you how. It presses into the fittings and then how I actually take it out of the roll and um, anchor it down with the clamps and so forth and so on. So, let's get to go, going here and uh, I'm going to move outside and show you some things I did out there earlier. Okay, so what I do is I set this in the center and it usually has these um, fiberglass bands around it that hold it together. I cut those off. But I leave the plastic on and then start taking it out of the center of the of the roll here. And if it's, um, well, this one's going to go in this direction. So if it was going to go in the other direction, all I have to do is put this stuff back through the center and flip the roll over. And then it'll be going in the other direction. But for right now, this is all I need. Okay. So this is a nice tool to have. This is for cutting this type of tubing. And if you don't have a nice, uh, decent square end on this end of it, you're going to want to cut it off and, and square it up. This one looks like it uh, was cut with a stamp cutter, so I'm going to take a little bit off right here. And what you're going to do is you put some pressure on it and then rotate these. Don't try to just squeeze them straight through the plastic. Now that's got a better looking end on it. All right, so here's the coupler already pressed on one end, and I got to push this into this end. Now it takes a little bit of pressure and strength to do this, and you have to kind of like wobble them around a little bit as you're pushing, and you get them all the way in as far as you can, and then that's not coming back out of there. All right, so the next thing to do is kill the fly that's flying around my ankle uh, but uh, I'll give it a chance to live a little longer before I get the fly swatter okay so the next thing is to get start the clamps now you can see I've been doing these every other or let me put this down a little ways I've been doing it every other unit and then here I've been doing every other unit so this one is going to be put right here so what you do is you put your clamp down like that. I'm using half inch truss head screws. Okay, so they're kind of like a flat um, pan head, but they're, they're called truss heads. And then I'm just going to align that with this next row here and shoot it down. That's it. Okay, now I can. Uh, Keep on working this around, and every place that I come to where um, it's going to get the next clamp, let me rotate this around. Okay, so the next clamp is going to be in this row right here. So I'll put the next one there. And get a screw on my screwdriver tip and shoot it down. And that's all there is to it. Now I'm going to keep going around with this and then when these corners get a little bit too tight to make bends then I'm going to use T's in there and that fly is just getting a little bit irritating. And They, they seem to know when your hands are full and they come and attack you at a point where you can't reach them. I keep a fly swatter around here so I can fool them and just reach down and give them a good whack. But uh, it's all the way over there at the table saw. I'll get that in a minute. Okay, so anyway, like I was saying, when it gets too tight to make a bend here without it kinking, then in the center here where the rows are, I'll start using T's and a piece in between the T's. So there'll be one, uh, see if there, we're in frame here. It'll be one on this side and one on this side with a little piece of tubing in the middle. Okay, and what that'll do is 
uh, instead of going all the way around in a circle, it'll uh, bypass and, and just hold water, slow the water speed down in the center here. Because the input of this is starting right here. Okay. So let me get this out of this holder without hitting any buttons. Okay, so this is an, a, a 90 degree L and I use a Forstner bit. I'm going to get it in focus. Okay, this is a Forstner bit and uh, this is just the right size. So when I drill a hole through the wood, these 90s press in nice and tight. Okay, now I will be putting a little bit of silicone um, around this and right underneath it just so it won't push out and, and leave an opening there. I want to keep the heat in this thing. So I'll be coming back to this after I get all of the piping done. And I will have the glass all ready and cleaned. i got to wash both sides of the glass, have it nice and clean. And I'm going to have it set on here and I'm going to have all my clamps uh, going around the perimeter holding the glass down so then it'll be ready to go uh, from there I'm going to slowly lower this thing down like this and slide it down to the ground and then I'll put a um, uh, a cart underneath it so I can roll it and I'll roll it out to where it's gonna go and we'll get some water through here and see what kind of temperatures we're getting all right Let's move on down the road. And uh, the other thing I was working on over here is getting um, my bilge pump, which is going in my water tank ready. And uh, as you can see, I use the waterproof wire nuts on there and there's a gel in there. And, oh, I missed them. Uh, there's a gel inside of these that squishes out when you um, put them on and I'll have to clean that back a little bit so that because that doesn't dry really it just it's it's like a grease and uh, That'll give me a, a um, I want a clean surface so when I put my water weld on there to anchor these things together now one other thing I failed to mention um, when I was talking about this is this does not hang on the wire I have a piece of um, plastic rope that's uh, up at the tank right now that used to hold the other one. And I tie that around this um, collar area right here. And that the, actually is tied to the cover on the top of the tank. So the weight of this thing is hanging on a rope, not on the wire. Okay, so there's a little slack in the wire so that it doesn't want to pull the wires out of the uh, the motor all the time. All right, so this is my timer and I've got this set up all ready to go. Um, this one is going to be the positive for the other end of the, the wire that's coming from the pump and then this one will be the negative for the other end of the wire that's coming from the pump. And then on the back here you can see where it says Oh, that fly saw me, saw me pick that up and went right for my head. Oh. Anyway, the, uh, the back side of this, it says power on the right hand side right here is uh, positive and negative. But you take from the power, uh, that goes, the red goes to the battery and then this little red just jumps over. And this is a switch inside of here. So this will be the hot wire or the positive on this wire. So I'll be putting the power into the pump with the timer set. And I can set this for um, hours, minutes, and days. Okay, that's day, hour, minutes. Uh, let's see if I can get that in focus a little bit. What's going on there? Okay. Got the fly gonna get another one here I see a second one coming around anyway uh, yeah that's uh, what the way it's gonna work and then I also have an auto on and off on auto and manual so I can press manual red light comes on this will have a digital display on it when I'm uh, all hooked up 
I gotta find some small, small screws to go through these little holes so I can fasten this to my panel board that's up inside of the uh, pump house room underneath the staircase. All right, so we got that done. Well, what else will I, was I doing today? Well, I actually, let me head over here and grab my bottle of water. This was ice water 20 minutes ago. And now all I need is some instant coffee and I could have a cup of coffee as it is pretty warm out. Oh yeah. So the other thing I did today was I came up with an idea um, using some of the comments that I got on the um, critters eating my tree bark off of my mulberry trees. And then I modified that a little bit. And you remember all the junk I had just found in that junk pile. I had a big 10 foot long piece of uh, three inch drainage pipe as PVC drainage pipe. Well, this is what I did. Each one has a two foot piece of pipe around the trunk of the tree, coming up the, the full two feet from the ground. Now, I split it on my table saw, and then as you let it relax a little bit, that split opened up to be oh, about a half an inch wide. So it was very easy to get it around the trunk by just opening it a little bit more, starting at the bottom and running it up. Then I took some little truss head screws, like those little screws I just showed you I'm using on the panel inside there, and I put one on each side of the unit, and then used some tie wire to tie it back together again so they can't get in between there and go inside to the bottom. Now this is slippery, so they won't be able to climb it either. So those uh, desert ground squirrels have just uh, met their match, but they might be able to climb these poles. So I'll have to keep an eye on that. And if they do, <clears throat> then I'm going to have to get rid of these poles and go to something else that they can't climb. All right. But uh, at the bottom, down here, you see another screw right in there. Okay, I got one on each side. And there's tie wire in there. And the tie wire is tied to that um, aviary wire that I've got around the base so that they can't tunnel down underneath and eat the roots. So that thing is anchored solid to the bottom so they can't lift it up and go underneath it either. I got one of those on every one of my trees here. You see the one down there. You see the one over here. Now this one was a slightly taller, slimmer tree. So I put the taller piece of it with a coupler on this one. And uh, they're all the same. They got the two pieces of tie wire anchoring them together so that they won't open up. And then they got a pe two pieces of tie wire that go down through the um, kind of like the chicken wire that's on the bottoms here. So they can't uh, uh, pull this thing up. It's attached to the wire. Now, these holes that are right here, this is not something that was digging underneath this thing. This was when I was watering. I put the uh, hose there and the water pressure washed dirt out from in there. So there's nothing that's been trying to, well, something has been trying. They've been uh, scratching away and they just exposed the, the wire mesh, but they can't get through it. So they're getting frustrated. Then I noticed that the trees this morning had more bark missing, so they can't get to the roots, so now they're eating the, the bark. Well, they got a surprise coming tonight when they try to get on this stuff. <laughs> Mess with the bear. Uh, all right, so that's about all I have. Um, I hope the wind's not drowning me out too bad. It's uh, coming up again. There's the other one over there. It's got its uh, pipe on it protected. And the girls and the guys inside the chicken coop are all doing well. I just gave them some uh, uh, cabbage leaves from the outer leaves of my cabbage plants. And uh, they went nuts for that. And so they're all relaxed and settled in. Got plenty of water. 
they had water in their wading pools earlier. Um, I don't know, the little birds fly around and climb in there and try to eat up that stuff. So, Anyway, that's all I have for today. I hope that you enjoyed today's episode. Questions and comments at the bottom. And uh, we'll get to work so and get some more stuff done tomorrow. And I should have that panel done and have the uh, pump in the uh, water tank tomorrow and all of that stuff. And I'll show you all of that stuff, how it operates. G-Bear signing off.